Now to make our Chardonnay wine, we are going to be using the following. We need one quart, 32 fluid ounces of Chardonnay white grape concentrate. We are going to be using a Red Star Premier Coupe de Blanc wine yeast, and I've selected this particular wine yeast because A, I've got it, and B, it's got a very low ABV alcohol tolerance, and it's decent for white wines. We're going to be using a little bit of bread yeast. We need the bread yeast because, like with this channel, I like to use substitutes wherever possible, and since we will be using a yeast nutrient, we can actually make a yeast nutrient from bread yeast. We will be using the juice of one quarter of a lemon, and the lemon is acting as our acid blend substitute to give a little bit of acidity or brightness to the wine. We'll need one black tea bag, and the black tea is going to be acting as our tannin substitute, which is going to provide a little bit of astringency to our wine. Now to dilute our Chardonnay concentrate, we are going to need at least three quarters of a gallon of water. I'll be using an eight quart pot. You're going to need a one gallon jug, Carboy, Demijohn, take your pick. In this case, I'm using a four liter jug to do our primary fermentation in. Uh, a second one will be helpful when you do subsequent rackings throughout the uh, rest of the fermentation period. You'll need an airlock with bung. It might also be helpful to have a hydrometer testing tube so we can determine what our starting gravity and our ending gravity so we can determine how much alcohol is actually in our final product. And of course, using your sanitizer of choice, whether it be Star Sand or One Step or some other, we want to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized throughout the entire fermentation process. And that's what we're going to be using to make this Chardonnay. Now, the recommended dilution is one quart of concentrate to 2.8 quarts of water. And that translates into about 11 and a third cups of water that we're going to be adding. Let's go ahead and start this process by adding in some of our water. And we want to take a little bit of our water and put it in a small pot. Ooh, anywhere from a quarter to a half a cup. Pour the remainder in our big pot. And then we can begin adding in our concentrate. I will rinse this out to get every last little drop out of this container. But for the moment, I just want to mix that up. Put our lid on, and in our other pot, I'm going to go ahead and drop in our tea bag, and we want to take a quarter teaspoon of our bread yeast, which again is going to act as our yeast nutrient. Yeast need more than sugar to survive, and the nutrient helps to provide a little bit of extra kick for the yeast. We want to turn our stove on. And we're going to bring our black tea slash tannin substitute slash yeast nutrient substitute to a simmer. And we're going to bring our Chardonnay juice up to about 165 degrees. A little bit more won't hurt, but the reason why we're doing that is that since we're not using Camden tablets to sterilize the juice, and we want to make sure that we pretty much kill off any wild yeast or some bacteria that might have survived the trip. Heating it up to 165 will take care of that. Alright, I think this is warm enough. You can either take a temperature reading with a thermometer or we you start seeing just slight mists of steam coming up. You don't need to see bubbles boiling or anything like that. You pretty much know it's warm enough. We want to turn off our heat. 
and both burners. We're going to take our tannin substitute slash yeast nutrient substitute. We want to go ahead and add that to the mix. I'm going to go ahead and put our lid back on. And we're going to let this come down to room temperature. Well, now that our mixture has come down to room temperature, we can go ahead and take our lid off. And go ahead and add in our acid blend substitute, which is our lemon juice. I find that a quarter of a lemon usually just about does it these days. Let's go ahead and give that a little stir. And now let's go ahead and take a hydrometer reading. All right, looks like our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.094. Now I've taken the opportunity to spare you the process of me pouring the juice from the pot into the carboy. And since I've got a little bit of headspace, make sure the cap's on tight, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good little shake for about a minute or so. And the reason for that is that we want to try and incorporate a little bit more oxygen into the, into the mix to help our yeast out a little bit. Now, at this point, you can either go through the process of blooming your yeast, or you can do the process that I'm going to do this time around. And I do in most of my videos is that I'm just going to add the yeast in straight. And I'm going to get the cap back on just a little bit. Normally I would just leave it, but I'm going to give this a little swirl just to incorporate the yeast a bit. It don't take much. Take this cap off and now put in our airlock. Now again, the purpose of the airlock is to let the CO2 that's going to be produced by the yeast as it's eating the sugar it allows that an opportunity to, to, to escape without creating undue pressures on the bottle. And furthermore, it stops little bugs and gnats from getting on down in there and into your potential wine to be. Now for this part of the process, we're going to go ahead and label our creation. We are making, hopefully, a Chardonnay. We started it on this date. And our starting gravity again was 1.094. Now, of course, at this point, this is generally where the video tends to come to an end. However, it's become necessary for me to say the following. One, yes, there is a long process that's going to follow this stage here. Uh, generally, those steps I have outlined in my uh, channel's playlist under winemaking operations, which describes the subsequent rackings and later on the degassing and bottling and pasteurization and basically everything that, that precedes or follows this, you will find there. The only reason why I don't put them in my videos is because if you've seen one rack, you've seen them all, basically. When sediment starts to build up on the bottom to about yay, half an inch or so, then generally that's when I consider it necessary, eh, somewhat necessary, to go ahead and rack it, which again is a process of transferring your wort or wine from this container into a second container, and then repeating the process as often as necessary. Now again, because we are not dealing with country style wines, which are pretty much good to go after several weeks or months, uh, this one will take several years. Uh, there will be a 12 month tasting of this, 
And uh, again, if I'm still around, uh, there will be a two-year tasting of it as well. Okay, it's now been 12 months since we started making our Chardonnay wine from Concentrate. Uh, it's now time to give it a taste test. Since that 12 months, it's been racked a couple of times, it's been degassed, it's been back sweetened, and it's been bottled and corked. It's now time to do that tasting. Uh, observational notes, no, it didn't go clear, and I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, it is what it is. Um, let's see, born date, 6-15-2022. ABB came in at 13.13%, so it's got a little kick to it. Um, Oh, one other thing, it's pasteurized. Uh, that being said, uh, because my time is relatively short, let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open. Oh, no, let's not crack the bad boy open. Um, when I say that my wine has been back sweet, in case you guys don't know, uh, it basically means that uh, all of my wines will go dry, which means there's absolutely no sugar in it whatsoever. And uh, I don't really like my wines that way. So in order to adjust the sweetness level, I add sugar after the fact prior to bottling. Uh, when I do tastings, I find out if it's sweet enough. No, I don't pour a full glass and gulp it down. I use little three ounce Dixie cups. And no, I don't use the full three ounces to do the tasting. It's more along the lines of just barely covering the bottom just to see if there's enough uh, sweetness in it that's okay. One of the reasons for that is that uh, you only get five bottles out of each gallon so you want to try and make sure you've got enough left over uh to fill up your five five bottles so that's what happens when i do uh back sweetening uh this is a standalone video on back sweetening degassing uh rackings all, the whole nine yards of all of the processes that you don't see on film you can find standalone videos there it's easier to do it there than to do it for each and every video because that i ain't got time for that uh, now then, I digress. Let's get back to it. Crack this bad boy open. Okay. This might not be pretty. Oh, it was. He is kind of early. I think I'll leave it at that at first. All right. Uh, give it the nose test to make sure that it's it's still drinkable. So what do you smell? Seriously, what you smell is alcohol. <laughs> you don't really get much of any other smell. Uh, not being a wine connoisseur, connoisseur, I can't say that it smells like um, like chardonnay or, or or anything else basically it's uh when i do the sniff test it <laughs> has it gone bad <laughs> can you smell the alcohol that's that's what what you, what you see me doing here Does it taste like a Chardonnay? It does. Probably sweeten it just a little, probably sweeten it just a little bit more, but it's okay. Um, it has a certain, on the back end, it has a certain dryness. It feels like it's drying your tongue just a bit. Um, I think it would benefit from, from a little bit of breathing <laughs> prior to drinking. Um, to soften it down a bit. It's got some sharp notes to it though. Um, it's kind of like a, a sharp taste. And then it's got that little tongue dryness sensation. Um, um, yeah, that would be how I would characterize it. Is it drinkable? Well, I don't know. It's sippable, but is it drinkable?
If I had to give a quick characterization of it, I would probably say probably another year for this to be finally finished. Yeah, I'd give this one another year. Uh, so we're talking two years uh, from start to uh, start to finish. I mean, you can drink it now. It's it's fine. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Um, yeah, give it another give it another year. Uh, more than likely, we will revisit this in another video as an add on to this video <laughs> in a year from now. Um, yeah, so uh, once again, to repeat, it's got some very sharp notes, a um, bit of dryness, even though it's sweet. I'm not going to characterize it. I'm just, I would take hydrometer readings just to give you an idea of where the hydrometer is coming in at after it's been back sweetened, so you would know exactly how sweet it is. But this ain't that kind of channel, okay? Basically, it's not dessert sweet, and it's not dry. It's not semi-dry. It's kind of like semi-sweet in terms of tasting. That's my taste buds. What your taste buds might say would be totally different, but uh, that's what I'm saying here. Um, yeah, Chardonnay from Concentrate. Well, not Concentrate. That was kind of Concentrated. Yeah, I'll call it a Concentrate. Uh, after one year, it's, it's, once again, it's drinkable, but it's not quite ready. I'm going to drink this bottle, but the other four bottles uh, we'll, you'll be seeing those again in about one year's time. So again, actually, this can be a short video. Uh, if you like what you see here, click on that uh, subscribe button, uh, notify button, Patreon. <laughs> and I'll try and continue to do these on a, I won't say regular basis because I'm still quite busy, but I will try and continue to do these more often. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.